Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Dr. Taylor. <laughs> Dr. Payne, I should say. And welcome to our viewers this morning. Uh, this is a distinct pleasure for HealthFlix Online. I'm Matt Taylor, one of the founders. And today I have the pleasure of uh, offering some wisdom from one of the, the true greats in the world of yoga therapy, Dr. Larry Payne. He's a friend, mentor, teacher, regular old buddy of mine, but he's also a co-founder of the International Association of Yoga Therapists way back in 1989. He leads a number of uh, world-changing programs. He's uh, got an ongoing yoga therapy RX program at the Loyola Marymount University there in, in Los Angeles. He also directs and runs the Prime of Life, uh, which is now becoming Yoga for Over 50 Prime of Life. And he's got a new book coming out as soon as the world opens back up, which is called Yoga uh, for Over 50, but in the Dummies series by Wiley Publishers. And so it's with great honor, I, I welcome you here, Larry, and wondering how things are in, in Los Angeles as we get started. Hi, Matthew. Uh, just to, to be real, I, it, it's a, a true pleasure to be here with you. We go way back, as some people don't know, and uh, I, I just, I always enjoy doing things with you. And I wanna thank you for setting this up for so many people here. I know I noticed other ones, Richard Miller and other people you're doing. And uh, I, I want to thank you for doing another pioneering thing. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the best, I think, is what that is. <laughs> so, so, so tell our viewers before we get started with the practice portion, um, how with all the whole world of yoga, did you become more focused on prime of life and yoga for over 50? How, how did that become a focus of yours? kind of naturally in, evolved because um, I noticed that in the world of yoga, if you go out and look at the, the classes that are offered today in America, and I don't know how it is in the UK, but the majority of the classes that are offered are for the young and restless, <laughs> you know? And sure. you know that yoga was meant for three stages of life. You know, a building stage, they all have Sanskrit names, you know, a maintaining stage and then a one-on-one -on -one stage. And uh, unfortunately, uh, th th this middle stage is left out. We got like 15 million or more people and they still have some wind in their sails, you know. <laughs> so it goes, you know, flow yoga and then it drops off to chair yoga and restorative yoga. Nothing in between. And this is huge group of people. And uh, how it first happened to you, when I was studying privately with Deska Char, he was uh, moving with something called Vini Yoga, which basically means you teach yoga to the whole person. Uh, and regardless of their age, their profession, their mental state, all that. But the principles that were often forgiving seemed to really appeal to this age bracket. So uh, then I started looking at the statistics on people like over 50. And it was an interesting study over 10 years and almost 1,000 people went to emergency rooms that were over 50 that just went to the wrong yoga class. Oh, no. so I said, wait a minute, here, you know. So there's a whole lot of stuff in between, you know, flow yoga and, and chair and restorative yoga. And then, they, you know, like you said, we, we still got some things to do here. And I'm in that bracket, and I, I, I feel very good about, uh, you know, leading more for this age bracket. I see. And, and of course, now with uh, many people still sheltered or at least uh, somewhat socially distant, that, that gives a kind of a special challenge to the over 50 group, doesn't it? Maybe speak Absolutely. to that a little bit. Absolutely. But, you know, the, the people that have online programs... Are, are, are really getting huge numbers going there because everybody's at home. It's relatively inexpensive a month to have, uh, you know, unlimited yoga lessons. And I'm happy to say that uh, just recently I, I made um, 11 videos with Yoga International. They're a good organization. And so, um, 
you know, people can can go there and see these videos for, and they're called Yoga After 50. Um, yeah. that's, that's not a bad way to go while we're all inside, you know, and there's a lot of them you can look at and see, but the, the, the Yoga International is a good one. Okay. And so I particularly have always enjoyed the dummy series. I don't know if it's because it applies or what, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> But, but for our listeners that, 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 haven't, that haven't ever practiced yoga, um, is, are your, uh, the things you're going to share today in that, is, are, are they appropriate for a relative novice, somebody that hasn't done much yoga? Absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take uh, something we can do sitting just because of the fact that it's hard to show me in full frame. And uh, it, also, there's so many things that you can do. And also... Not to mention that the most frequent sign of tension in the Western being is the neck and shoulders. <laughs> so, you know, we can go after that in, in a big way. Oh, but, great. You know, dummies books, it's so funny, the name Yoga for Dummies, but if you look, they're all scholars who are like, you know, the authors. And uh, let me just say this, if I please, let me say it. But, um, you know, the... The new book, Yoga After 50 for Dummies, is coming out in August. And, you know, we, uh, Wiley has hires people they call uh, uh, experts. So they needed an expert for the category of yoga. And I said, well, why do you need an expert? I've been doing this 40 years, you know. And they go, well, we have to have it. So Dr. Matthew Taylor is the yoga expert. Whoa. <laughs> every page. And the other person looked at every page. Uh, is the ed editor, uh, a book editor and lawyer at um, uh, AARP because they endorsed the book on the cover. So I had so, Dr. Taylor and, 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 and the AARP looking at every single page. So it's quite a good book, I have to say. Oh, yeah. Especially since Dr. Taylor was my expert. Oh, thank you. But, and, and for the viewers that aren't familiar with AARP, that's the American Association of Retired Persons, I think, is the... Yeah, only is 33 the, million people. How many? 33 million will be in, will get the announcement about this book. <laughs> okay. Well, that, well, we're really privileged that way. <laughs> um, so when we, when we talk about the Over 50 crew... Uh, any particular safety things that they ought to know when they're when they're shopping yoga? That uh, I know it's all in, we you've got it all built in your book, but maybe a, just a short list of uh, red flags or sort of oh, careful, this isn't where you belong, kind of. I, I think that um, one of the things is that those flow, you know, flow class. They all have different names. Flow this, flow that. Uh, you don't need to jump in and out of postures uh, to okay. do the yoga. Okay. Right. The other thing that is funny, Deskachar told me about this years ago when I studied with him. That's my t main teacher, TKD Deskachar, bless his soul. Um, he told me about the danger of a, a seated straight legged forward bend. And everywhere in America, uh, before the virus anyway, at a hotel, there's a yoga class and there's somebody very attractive teaching the class. And there, there's a guy who goes out there who's 55 and he's trying to imitate the teacher with the straight legs and reaches for tone, throws his back out every week in this Africa <laughs> across sure. America. So he's going to be very careful of that pose. Um, and there's some, you know, a lot of people, a lot of conditions, as you know, that it's not good to round when you're, when you're going forward. So that, that one they have to be careful of. Uh, in the classes. And another thing that I, I found that was when people asked me about where to go, I said, go sit out in front of the class and see who's coming in and out of the class. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a good tool, though, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want to be with these people. <laughs> and be honest with yourself. You don't belong there, right? <laughs> All 22 are coming out sweaty. That's not really where you want to go. No, no. So, so if they aren't sweating, what's what's happening that's useful to to the over 50 crowd? What 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 is it that about that this practice of yoga that's uh, 
going to, particularly now in this high stress, you know, isolated time, what, what are some of the things that yoga gives us that we, we might not be aware of beyond a physical exercise, right? Well, first of all, I want the first question that we're not getting sweaty and so forth. Um, for this age bracket, um, I always have recommended that you also have something aerobic to go with it because this style of yoga is not aerobic. So number one, walking is like for most people, walking, bicycle, swimming, elliptical, those are all nice ones. And, uh, you know, we, we need something because it's not a cardiovascular kind of an approach to yoga, whereas young and restless yoga gets in some cardiovascular, you know. Right. So I recommend that they, they supplement with that. Um, also, we have some pretty nice uh, things like uh, we call rejuvenation sequence, uh, where you, you, know, you do a lot of, of standing, forward bend, back bend, you know, that type of stuff. Um, and I would say that always, especially this age bracket, any age bracket, the hamstrings are a big deal, you know. So we often go there and then just, you know, strengthening the front of your back, you know, in some way. And even the Mayo Clinic now has planks, so I guess they're they're here, uh, so we can have a yoga plank. Uh, but I, you know, there's a lot of just, um, you know, again, you don't have to do the hard postures in yoga to get the benefits. And Deskachar told me that with 25 postures and their variations, which you take you about 75, you can fix the world. So it doesn't have to be all the crazy acrobatic things that we see marketed, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And it, I mean, during this period, people have trouble with sleep and uh, probably don't digest their food and that sort of thing. But we've got some evidence that suggests a, 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 a regular yoga practice that you're describing that has benefits like that, that people might not be aware of, right? Yes, and also I'm going to, toward the end, I'm going to share a couple of breathing exercises that are very helpful. One, just to calm people down, and two, for the immune system, which right now is a big deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, huge, yeah. All right, well, I think we're at that point where maybe you should quit talking and show us what you're talking about, Dr. Payne. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have my screen go blank, Larry. You take the class, and then when you're ready, just say, okay, Matt, let's do questions, okay? If, if you will stay on for a moment, I'm going to move to the right distance. If you'll let me know that you can still hear me. Yep, that's good. Okay, all right. Have fun, everybody. <laughs>
with your thumb up and as you exhale, take it down. So we continue and just this simple exercise begins to bring circulation to the area. And when we get to about three on each side, which is coming up soon, we'll start turning the head with it, which adds a little more. All right, so here we go. Raise your arm and turn your head. And then back down again. And now turn, thumbs up, back and forth. So most of these things will be doing something like five or six times. And last one. All right, good. Now, uh, shoulder rolls are helpful. So hang your arms down and as you inhale, bring your shoulders up way back and down, exhaling, inhale up way back, exhale down and around. By the way, as I'm doing this, I want to remind you that yoga breathing is through the nose with inhale and exhale. And I know all kinds of other aerobic activity are different. Now let's go back the other way, reversing. And you need to breathe through the mouth when you're doing you know, cardio. Um, and if you try to breathe through the nose when you swim, you might drown. <laughs> so yoga breathing says, the mouth was meant for eating and the nose was meant for breathing. So try it if you can, unless of course you have an obstruction or something like that. All right, now we're gonna to add to this <clears throat> to get more than just the shoulder itself, the girdle, the scapula, all those things. Inhale up way back and down. Rolling. Good. We're trying to go, you know, five, six times on these things. Now let's go the other way. There we go. So you hear a lot of crunching, clicking. Those are the sounds of mature joints. <laughs> Good. All righty. Now the next one is called the wing and the prayer. So place your hands together like a prayer and send your prayer up. Inhale. And now as you exhale, bring your hands back down. And then open up your wings. And back. So inhale up, watch your hands. Exhale down, inhale wide open, exhale back together, and up inhale. And you'll feel a lot of things moving and really helpful. And I think at the end, when you retest your neck and shoulders, you'll be a surprise. Let's try two more of these. And last one. And back. Okay. Now, there's another great one called the mirror on the hand. So place your hands on your thighs just above your knees. And as you inhale, raise one of your hands up to eye level. You look at the back of your hand. And as you exhale, bring it across to your opposite shoulder and watch your hand. Now, as you inhale, watch the back of your hand as you take it around. Now, only go as far as your head wants to turn. Some people can turn all the way. Some people can't. That's all right. And all the way back in front of you and back down. Other side, inhale. And then across, exhale, chin down. And then 
Take your time all the way around as far as your head wants to turn and all the way back and down. So let's get a rhythm, inhale up, exhale across, all the way around. Lots of things working in your upper back, neck and shoulders. This side. Now, if anybody um, has anything that doesn't feel good, just leave these out. Anything that doesn't feel right, leave it out. And only go as far as your neck wants to turn. And again, this is called the mirror on the hand, and it's the back of your hand. When I was studying privately with Deskachar in India, he had a very famous uh, Indian guitar uh, violin player. And he was giving that person this exercise while I was watching. Good. Let's try one more round. And these all get easier as you practice them. Last one on this side. And back down. Now, this next one is probably the most complicated, but it has a lot of great benefits. Um, it's called the newspaper. So you just <clears throat> take a look at your hands like you're reading a newspaper. And as you inhale, take the newspaper up and don't bring your head way back, just sort of follow with your eyes. And as you exhale, bring just the chin down. And now as you inhale, take your elbows back and open up. And as you exhale, it's like going over the fall. Stay up really high. And then look at your hands again. And as you exhale, bring your hands head down. Now that's one. We're going to go for six. So, you know, if you need to drop out any time, if this is too much, just stop any time on any of my uh, postures. Inhale up, chin down, exhale, elbows back, over the falls, looking at your hands and chin down. Inhale up, exhale down, elbows back, and over. Looking at the hands and chin down. So much fun. <laughs> Inhale up, chin down, elbows back, over the falls. Looking at your hands and chin down. A couple more. Inhale up, chin down, exhale. Elbows back, over the falls. Looking at your hands, chin down. One more time. Up, inhale, chin down. You can put on music if you like. <laughs> inhale back, all the way over. Looking at your hands and chin down. Okay. Now, another thing that you can do uh, with your chair is a twist. And, you know, there are some people who have to be careful with twists, but this is a pretty conservative one. So you can turn in either direction, sideways, place your hand on the back of the chair. And as you inhale, come straight up. And as you exhale, twist into the chair. Each inhalation, you come up higher. Each exhalation, you twist deeper. Inhale up, exhale. The third one, just kind of stay there for a while. Mm, about like that. Good. Come around. Also, don't twist your neck off. You know, the main twist is in your trunk. 
And some people will just really crank their neck around and that doesn't do much for actually your lower spine. So just sort of follow along and don't exaggerate with the neck turn, please. Hands on the back of the chair, inhale up, exhale, twist into the chair. Inhale up, exhale, twist. Inhale up, exhale, twist. Smooth breath and release. Now, after doing something unusual, it usually helps to come back with something familiar. So after a twist, usually it helps to fold. So come on down slowly, exhaling. Inhale up. Exhale back down. Back and forth. Usually on the third time, we're going to stay down. Be sure to let your head and neck relax. Smooth breath. And when you're ready, just roll the body up. Okay. Now, I told you we were going to do a before and after test. So let's just see if you feel you made any progress. Take your hand across to the shoulder and try to find those tight spots. And I have to tell you that mine feels very reduced. Let's try the other side. How about that? Okay. Now, I would like to finish off the segment with some breathing techniques and I'll tell you the two categories that seem to be very fitting for what's going on in the world today. Um, one of them is to help calm you down. How's that sound? And the other one is for your immune system, which right now is pretty darn important. So for the first one, a simple one, how to relax, put your hands on your belly. And as you inhale, feel your belly expanding in all directions. And please continue to try and breathe through the nose. Exhale. So we're going to continue with this belly breathing for five rounds. Coming up on three. And please remember to breathe through your nose. If you want to close your eyes, it's optional. And one more. Good. Now, if you move your hands to your side ribs, and as you inhale, expand your ribs, and as you exhale, release your ribs. Inhaling and exhaling. Most of you have never broken the breath down like this, so it's a very interesting feeling, especially at the end when we put them all together. Good. Now, let's take five above your breasts, focusing there. Inhale, chest expands. Exhale, chest releases. Going for five. And now the big bonus, hands on your thighs. <clears throat> Follow me. Inhale belly, then ribs, then chest. Exhale chest, then ribs, then belly. If it gets complicated, just exhale. This is deeper than you ever breathe and maybe in your life, okay? Inhaling. Belly, ribs, chest. Exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Repeating. Exhaling.
Didn't know you could breathe that deep, did you? Beautiful. Now the second breathing technique is for the immune system. And how many people wouldn't want to help their immune system right now? It's a form of alternate nostril breathing and all of these yoga techniques have Sanskrit names and so forth and so on. But <clears throat> the general category is alternate nostril breathing. And there are ways to hold your hands in yoga called a mudra. And there's many of those, but what I found is the easiest is a lot of people as a goal in their life want to at some time go to Hawaii. And in Hawaii, they have this thing they call the hang loose sign. <laughs> it's like this. So if you just add your ring finger to that, you've got one of their classic um, hand mudras called Mirga Mudra or the deer handler. So bring your hand close to your face and block off your right nostril and just blow the air out of your left. Now inhale left, <clears throat> block off the left, exhale right. Inhale right, block off the right, exhale left, and continue. So what's happening right now <clears throat> is you are working on two main flows in the yoga esoteria of balancing your system. If you get a little dizzy, it's normal. And what you do is you work your way up. So we're starting off with just five rounds. But what you can do over a period of time is first work up to five minutes and then really 10 minutes. And a lot of things you'll notice start to feel better, your sleep, everything. Last one. I'll just sit for a moment and close your eyes and see how that makes you feel. And for some of you, it'll be a very new experience on how you feel. And try to remember that feeling and know that you can return here whenever you can. <clears throat> so that concludes the exercise portion. But before we go back to questions and answers with Dr. Taylor, I'd like to give you a little back choice since we're talking about uh, the UK. My father is English, the name Payne, and my mother is Italian, Marino. And on my father's side, my great-great-grandparents were wine testers for the royal family. And one of them was a medical doctor. So if you go into Kensington Square and you go into the Catholic Church in Kensington, you look up on the wall and there's a plaque there to Dr. Payne. So I just want to make that connection with you. <laughs> okay. So well, I guess be beautiful, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Another way to deal with pain, the, the wine testing business. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. Well, that felt great. Thanks very much. I, I, I bet our participants enjoyed the, the feeling too. So, um, yeah. And so if you aren't familiar with the question answer feature folks on the bottom of the screen, if you roll your mouse over, you'll see a Q&A and just type in your question and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, 
and then as they come in, Larry, I'll I'll be happy to, to read those for you. Okay. okay. Um, so I really liked what you said at the beginning about not only is it the, the yoga that's useful, but to get that that aerobic component in, right? And so so if people are in their in their apartments or their flats or their house or whatever, if you can get to a, a safe place where you can breathe up maybe up and down the stairwell, maybe outside, but uh, so important because that that complements everything we do in our in our yoga, right? Absolutely. And yeah. usually, you know, just put on a mask and go out and walk. That's, you know, just walk out your door somewhere and walk. That's, or, you know, if you're stuck inside, you go up and down stairs, those type of things. Okay. Um, the time of day that works better for folks on this is, does it matter when they would might do this, Larry? Well, there are statistics that show that if you get something done in the morning, you have a better chance of getting it done, you know? Right. But it really depends. And there are some people who say, I work this schedule and I, when I get home, that's the best time. But statistically, you know, you have a, a, something like a 30% a better chance of something happening if you do it before you start your day. Right. Okay. That's, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? How about... Um, you know, does it, within the book that's coming out, since it is for over 50, is there anything in there that deals with uh, wh how to modify their practice if they have a health condition, you know, something like osteoporosis or that is, do you deal with any of that in your book? That's that question, sir. Yes, um, the most common health conditions that we have in there, osteoporosis being one of them, but, you know, like back problems, knee problems, hip problems, shoulder problems, you know, all the main aches and pains uh, that uh, people have um, are in there. So you have routines to support people that are struggling with that as well. Huh? Yeah, we, we had somebody great supervising us. What's his name? Uh, Dr. Taylor. <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah. My understanding of you is a bit of a pain in the, the lower end. Maybe in Britain, we might say the arse. <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's see no no other questions at this point um how do you how, how might you suggest people bring this up to uh their physician because i know in your book you often say you know before you get started you know check with your physician how do they say it to their physician so they don't think it's this crazy yoga what, what would be a good way for a a person to bring it up to their doctor and say, hey, I'd like to do some yoga for over 50. And you know, what would reassure the physician that this is going to be appropriate for, for people? I think one of the ways, honestly, is to send your doctor to my website. There's a lot of information that give me, you know, credentials. And, uh, and that's samata, S-A-M-A-T-A dot com, S-A-M-A-T-A dot com. Okay. And you can see a lot of, uh, you know, testimonials and they and they also see like a lot of doctors endorsing me um and uh also here's what I, I i've noticed that the younger doctors are really into yoga yeah. it's something that some of the ones who are like you know getting ready to retire or whatever what's that yoga stuff you know but um if if they see something credible you know and, and uh, also just the fact that um the, the, the Wiley Publishing is very well respected, even though it says yoga for, you know, dummies. Everybody knows that the dummy series has got really good experts. Um, so that also helps for them to know that it's uh, published in that book. Definitely. Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, it looks like we might, might have a question. Let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. Uh, Stephanie wonders, will these exercises help to lower blood pressure? Will, will the yoga for over 50, not particularly today's routine as much, I, go, I guess, but do, does yoga tend to support people with, with high blood pressure? Um, it does. The thing you have to be careful of in yoga, uh, if you have high blood pressure, is anything inverted. So in the book, it has some things where you put your feet up on the wall or you, you're in a half shoulder stand, a real safe one. Uh, I would be careful of those type of things. 
So by yeah. inverted, you mean feet above your head? Is that yeah. you, for for the people that don't know the language? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, I think you know, Matthew, you're you're also too expert. I'd like to get your feet. Would, you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think the other ones that go with the high blood pressure is one, it should be controlled. It's one thing to have high blood pressure and not have it controlled. That's dangerous. And don't, don't do Larry's book until you get your blood pressure under control, right? But, but when it is under control, you still, you, a couple of things I think I hear said is uh, no holding your breath, no retaining the breath, because there are some, not necessarily in your book, but there are yoga practices where people hold their breath. Um, and also the, uh, with the high blood pressure, often you get glaucoma, the, you know, the pressure, ex excessive pressure in the eyes. And that's the same, uh, concern is watch those where your head goes below your waist and upside down. That, uh, people who have, uh, especially, uh, type two diabetes concerns in their eyes. Uh, right. the exactly. Part. Yeah. So Stephanie, that's. Uh, a great question, and it, it, it's that's I think that's the thing that you and I love, right, Larry? That this is a this is a practice of life, health, life vitality, right? That's that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, we also um, talk a bit about the yoga off the mat. Um, you know, oh. for instance, which means what? What's that? How you walk um, in our courses, you know. Um, for instance, the average person takes, even a couch potato might take 2,000 steps, you know, two to 15,000 steps. And if you're turning out and your shoulders drop and something like that, and you're doing it, you know, 7,000 times, just helping somebody with their walk, uh, and it could be just as important. Also, how you sleep, um, you know, how you sit. Uh, these are all yoga off the mat. Here's one that I notice on a lot of people. Uh, chairs are mainly built for men. So if you're a woman and you're 5'4 or less, your feet are going to be dangling from the chair. So it's good to have something underneath your feet if you're sitting for a long time. Uh, and it used to be that I say, just get a phone book. <laughs> There's no phone books in <laughs> <laughs> Put, put your phone under your feet. <laughs> At home or work, you might like, you know, put a, a block or blanket or something there so that you're uh, lined up. And then, you know, you get me started on sitting. You know, it's like you wake up in the morning and you sit on the edge of the bed and you bend forward. You get up, you go in the bathroom, you sit down and take care of business, you bend forward. You get ready to go somewhere, you get in the makeup, you bend forward. Get in your car or the train, you bend forward. Go to work, there's a computer there, you bend forward. Then in the meantime, you're standing, looking down, <laughs> bending forward at your iPhone. And when you get home, you answer your personal emails, sitting, bending forward, your eyes get burned. We bend forward too much, in my opinion. So whenever you can have a standing break, I think that's always a, a good thing. And, you know, they sell these... Uh, devices to make your computer go up higher. But what I found is you just take a cardboard box and put it on a table, you know, and just spend part of the time standing. And what I have found, and I'm curious about your thoughts on it, is that if you sit all the time or you stand all the time, it doesn't feel that great. So I think the alternating of the two usually feels the best. Uh, but there are some people you don't have to stand. But I found if I stood all the time, I wanted to sit sometimes. So I, I kind of trade off back and forth. Yeah, I think it, I think you're right. It's just that uh, the body wants variety. It's just like our diet. It should have a lot of variety. Same, well, maybe not that English diet if we can poke fun at our British friends over there. <laughs> Why don't you brought up diets, you know, uh, we also mm -hmm. talk about food in our book. And, uh, you know, if you don't do anything different, you're going to gain pounds every year when you start going up in weight. So, you know, uh, the main thing I wanted to put out there in the book is you don't have to be a vegetarian to do yoga, or to be a yogi. And that always causes controversy because there's some people who feel differently. And I, I support everybody who wants to be a vegetarian, a vegan, or any of those kinds of things. 
it's a very individual thing, you know, could even be your blood type or your heritage or something like that, that it's a very individual thing in how you eat. So that this is also part of the yoga off the mat, you know, your food. And, uh, you know, gaining weight is a problem as, as we have to 50. So we have to watch those things. Um, I also mm-hmm. noticed that eating late at night is not your friend. Um, right. And so, you know, but the thing is to, to pick a way of eating that, that's good for you. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is that carbs are not your friend after 40. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> they 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 do add up, don't they? <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, and I think it, it, and maybe one of the words I hear often with yoga is the the idea of yoga is relationships, right? It's a relationship with food, it's a relationship with your breath, with your body, with the people you interact with, and it's it's and that's why the nonviolence is. The, the top rule in, in yoga, right? Uh, and so maybe maybe close with just a little bit of how that idea, because you've lived your life of abundance and giving to so many people. Um, just how how does that main frame of non harming the the ahimsa, the the non violence in relationships? How how has that generated the work you've end up doing? Because because you have such an amazing legacy. Well, thank you. Well, let me frame it this way. Um, the first yoga book I ever received was from a man named Sylvester Yasudian. And he was in Zurich, Switzerland, and the book was called Yoga and Health. It's still there. And he lived in a spiritual marriage with a woman named Elizabeth Heitch, who had a book called Initiation, which was really big at that time. So when I took my sojourn around the world, uh, in 1980, um, I found this man in Zurich, and I went to his class, and then I told him about discovering his book and so forth. So he invited me to his house. So the next day, I went to his house, and I was there for three hours, just talking about yoga and all these things about his life, how he grew up in India, and all this. And at the end, when I went to leave. He said, you'll be a great yoga teacher. I said, oh, thank you, sir. And I said, "Uh, is there any one thing that you could share with me that will help me the most? He said, yes. He said, be an example. (laughs) So that comes to nonviolent. Any of those things is, you know, basically, um, you know, treat other people like you like to be treated yourself and try to be that example. And I, I tried hard to do that for all these 40 years. And uh, so that, that's the message I would leave you with. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and this is one more example. You've given this gift to us today and uh, we're so honored here at Health Flicks. And so I'd, I'd remind our viewers that, you know, Health Flicks, if you Google Health Flicks at, on YouTube, you can find our whole catalog. And so this most recent talk by Larry will be up in a couple hours and uh, please share it with your friends. And in the description, uh, people I'll also list then how you can track down the book, how you can track down uh, Larry's classes on uh, you know, Yoga International and that as well. So Larry, uh, you continue to set an example for me. Thank you, friend. Very mutual brother, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye everyone.